Good day. Today we're going to deal with the basics of redox reactions. We're also going to deal with balancing redox reactions. Let's begin. All right, let's deal with the word oxidation. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. Let's just look at and for instance, let's just say on the left side of the equation, let's just say its charge was two plus and let's say on the right side of the equation, it became three plus. So notice it was two, then it became three. So it increased in the positive direction. So whenever the charge increases in the positive direction, we call it oxidation. So this is the loss of electrons. Whenever the charge increases in the positive direction, the atom has been oxidized. So let's talk about reduction. Reduction is the gain of electrons. For instance, let's just say at the left hand side of the equation, we had Let's just say we had 2 plus and then now we just have Fe plus. So this was reduced because the oxidation number decreased from 2 to 1. So reduction is the gain of electrons. Whenever an atom gains electrons, the oxidation number will decrease. So we use the word Ulrich to memorize it. So oxidation is the loss of electrons reduction is the gain of electrons so let's look at the word oxidation agent so it's called oxidation agent not because it's the one that is being oxidized it is used as an agent in order to cause the other one to oxidize so hence it's called oxidation agent so just think of it as an instrument an oxidation instrument so it is used as an instrument in order to cause the other one to oxidize and then let's look at the word reduction agent. So reduction agent, it is used as an agent in order to cause the other one to be reduced. So it is used as an instrument in order for the other one to reduce. So oxidation agent is the one that causes the other one to be oxidized. Reducing or reduction agent is the one that causes the other one to be reduced. So that is how it is. Let's go to the practicals of redox reactions. All right, let's start here before we talk about balancing redox reactions. All right, let's just say you're asked to determine the oxidation number in each element in this compound. So they ask you to give the oxidation number of each, each element in this compound. So what you'll do is that you'll use the periodic table. So let's find out where is magnesium. So magnesium is in group two. So now this is what you should be doing. So usually in group 1, the oxidation number is plus 1, in, in group 2, it's plus 2, and then you skip this whole stuff, then in group 3, it's going to be plus 3. So usually in the last group, it's going to be negative 1, then negative 2, then negative 3. Now for this group, it's going to be plus or minus. So sometimes it's plus, sometimes it's minus, depending on the situation. So this is what you'll be using. So these are the rules for the oxidation numbers. So now let's find out. So now magnesium is in group 2 so therefore it has a charge of positive 2 so we know that for magnesium so for magnesium it's gonna be plus 2 so let's find out what will it be for fluorine so where is fluorine in the periodic table it's in this side so therefore it's gonna be so this is gonna be minus 1 so it means for fluorine we're gonna have minus 1 Alright, let's test if it's correct. Now notice, for the total, whenever there is no charge, it means it is zero. But if there is minus one right there, then it means that the total charge is minus one. But now, if there is nothing, it means the total charge is zero. Alright, here is another one. Let's just say you are told to give the oxidation number of calcium chloride. So calcium, let's find out where is calcium. So calcium is in group two, so it's going to be positive two. So we know the oxidation number for calcium is uh, positive 2. And then let's find out the oxidation number of chlorine. So chlorine is right here, so it's going to be negative 1. So it's in uh, the second last group. So it means for chlorine, it's going to be negative 1. So let's find out if, if um, it works. So we know that the total charge is 0. So then it means it's just going to be, since there's one calcium, we can say one times, we can say one times um, this stuff. So we can say one times two, and then, but there's no need to say one, but you can say that if you want to. 
and then plus two so it's gonna be plus two because there are two of them plus two times negative four and let's find out what does this give us so this is gonna be two minus two and this gives us zero so we know we're correct just before i continue if you want to be cheated whether it is online or physically whether it is the situation where you are struggling in math or whether it is the situation where you are good in math but want perfection, take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEB, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you are doing no matter which country you are at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week, we also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. Alright, here is another question. Let's just say you're asked to determine whether chromium is... So you're asked to determine whether chromium is oxidized or reduced. So let's just say on the left side of the equation you have this and on the right side of the equation you have that. So let's find out whether chromium has been oxidized or reduced. So we have to find out the charge of chromium first. So let's find out the charge in this element so we know that the total for this element is negative 2 so it's not 0 this time so let's figure out so we know that for for chromium since we're trying to find out the charge of chromium we'll call the charge x and since there are two of them we'll call it 2x so we'll say 2x plus and there are seven for oxygen so there are seven oxygen so it's gonna be seven times so let's figure out what is the charge of oxygen so notice oxygen is in this group so therefore the charge will be negative two so then it means it's gonna be seven times negative two so let's figure out so we know that the answer must be negative two because that is the total charge so let's figure that out so then it's gonna be minus 14 is equals to two so because we're trying to find out the charge of chromium in the left hand side and we also have to find out the charge of chromium on the right hand side then we'll be able to, to determine whether it is oxidized or reduced so let's solve for x so now here we're going to end up having 2 plus 14 which will be 16 so it means it's going to be 16 and if you divide both sides by 2 you end up having 8 so it means x is equals to so you have x is equals to 8 so it means the charge of chromium in the, on the left hand side of the equation is plus 8. Now let's find out the charge of chromium on the right hand side. Since we have got only one chromium, we're just going to say x. Then we're going to say plus. And notice there are four oxygen, so it's going to be four times. We already found out the charge of oxygen, which was negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2 is equals to. Okay, let's just say this is negative this is actually supposed to be negative so let's just say it's negative all right so now it's going to be negative one so then we're going to have negative one okay fine let me just do it step by step so this is going to be negative eight is equal to negative one so of course this gives us negative eight and then from here we're going to end up having it's going to be negative one plus eight and then over here we're going to have x is equal to seven so now notice it was 8 and it became 7. So the oxidation number has gone down. So therefore it has reduced. So we therefore know that chromium was reduced. Alright, let's go to another example before we go to higher level. Alright, let's just say you ask this question. Determine whether hydrogen is oxidized or reduced. So we have to find out whether hydrogen is oxidized or reduced so let's find the oxidation number so in the first one um, we know that the total charge is zero so let's find out so hydrogen is in the first group so in the first group the charge is positive one so it's just gonna be positive one so we're just gonna have positive one plus so now we are looking for hydrogen so we're just gonna say positive one plus x is equal to zero because the total charge is zero so it means we're gonna now say um, x is equals to so if we take this to the other side of the equation it's gonna be negative one and it means the charge of hydrogen in this case is negative one so let's find out the charge of hydrogen in the at the right hand side so we know that the total charge is zero so we're trying to find out the charge of hydrogen and there are two of them so it's gonna be 2x plus so what is the charge of oxygen well, the charge of oxygen is negative 2, so, and there's only one of them. So it's going to be plus negative 2 equals to 0 because the total charge is 0. So then it means 2x minus 2 is equals to 0. Therefore, 2x is equals to 2. And then 
when you divide both sides by two, you get x is equals to one. So it means hydrogen changed from negative one to one. So therefore, hydrogen was oxidized. Now you might find it weird. You might find it odd that uh, hydrogen is supposed to be, have uh, oxidation number of one, just like what we wrote here. But how come it's negative one here? All right, in order to explain it, here is an important note, a very important note. There is actually a rule that says H is always positive everywhere, except in metal halides. So like in this case, we've got sodium halide. So every time we've got metal halides, the charge of hydrogen is no more 1, according to the table. It's now negative 1. So every time we've got metal halides, please memorize that it's going to be negative 1. So this is a very important note. All right, here is another question. So let's just say they say, determine whether oxygen is oxidized or reduced. So we have to find out the charge of oxygen in each compound. So on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So let's find out on the left hand side. So on the left hand side, we have hydrogen, which the charge is, okay, the charge is gonna be plus one, right? So that's for hydrogen. So it means it's gonna be um, since there are two of them, we're going to have to say two, so it's going to be two times positive one. And then we're going to say plus. So now, this one is what we're looking for, and there's only one of them, so we're going to say x. We know that the total charge is zero because there is nothing written there, so therefore, it's just going to be two plus x equals to zero, therefore x is equals to negative two. So we found the charge of hydrogen on the left-hand side is negative, uh, of oxygen rather, which is negative two. And then let's find it on the right-hand side. So this time, so there are two hydrogens, so it's going to be two times positive one, and then we're going to have plus two, because there are two of this stuff. Now, we're looking for oxygen, so it's going to be plus two x, and the total charge is zero as well, so we're going to have two plus two x is equals to zero, and then two x is equals to negative two, and then x will be negative one. Now, notice... It's very weird that oxygen has a charge of negative 1. It doesn't make sense. There is also a rule for oxygen. So it's hydrogen. You know that hydrogen is always plus 1, except for metal halides. It's the same now with oxygen. So oxygen is negative 2 everywhere, except for what we call perioxides. So the perioxides, whenever we've got something like this. So let's just represent this by x so whenever we've got this stuff we call it perioxide so whenever something is bonded with oxygen and you see a double two there so this is these are perioxides so whenever it's in perioxides then the charge of oxygen now becomes negative one so you have to be careful of that it's also something you have to memorize so oxygen's charge is negative two everywhere except for perioxides where it is now negative one Yep, so this is how you find the, the charges, right? And how you find out whether it's oxidized or reduced. Now let's go to balancing equations, balancing redox reactions, rather. So balancing redox, redox reactions. Here is a question on balancing equations. But just before we attempt this question, if you're interested in knowing the prices of the tutorials, the video that contains the prices and the updated contact details just in case these ones have changed is found at the end of this video. Alright, let's deal with this question. This question reads as follows. Balance the following redox reaction. So you are told to balance the following redox reaction. So what you'll do is that you'll first deal with this pair. So let's deal with that pair. So now we had Fe2 plus before and then after the reaction we now have Fe3 plus. So the first step is to balance the atoms, and then the next step is to balance the charges. So let's check if the atoms are balanced. Yep, the atoms are balanced. There is one on the left and one on the right. So since the atoms are balanced, now we have to balance the charges. So now notice the charge here is two, the charge here is three. So you will focus on the one that has got a larger positive charge. So now what you're going to do is that we have to add electrons in such a way that this will become the same as this. So notice how many do we have to subtract from this charge so that it can become the same as the left hand side. Well, we have to subtract one. If we can subtract one from this charge, it will be the same as that one. So it means we have to add one electron. So 
if we can add one electron on the right hand side of the equation the charges will be balanced because 3 minus 1 is 2 and it's the same as this stuff so we have dealt with the left hand side uh, we have dealt with rather the first part so now let's deal with this part also so before it was Cl2 and then now it became Cl minus so first let's balance the atoms are the atoms balanced no nope, the atoms are not balanced because this side is two so this side there are two of them and this side there is only one so we have to add a two here so that they can be two on the left and two on the right so finally it is now balanced now let's deal with the charges well the charge here is zero because every time we're dealing with a pure compound like maybe o2 the charge is zero so the charge is zero here and then what about here well here the charge is negative one but notice there are two of them so the charge is now negative two so here we have cl2 which is a pure compound so the charge is zero so every time we've got a pure compound the charge will be zero and then here the charge is negative one but if you multiply by two it's negative two so which one has a higher positive charge well it's zero zero is bigger than negative two so it means we have to add electrons on the left hand side of the equation so that it can become the same as the right hand side so in order for them to become the same we have to add negative so we have to rather add two electrons because if we subtract two from zero the left hand side will become the same as the right hand side meaning that we have to add two electrons so therefore when we balance um, the charges we're gonna say cl2 plus 2e because we had to add two electrons and then there's gonna be two cl so it's gonna be two cl so now the charges are balanced so this plus two, two electrons so zero minus two is negative two and then this part is also negative two so it's balanced so this was two plus and then it became three plus so the charge increased so it means that it was oxidized and then now this one was zero and then it became minus so it means that it was reduced so this is what we call a half reaction so this is the oxidation half reaction this is the reduction half reaction so we have the oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction yep so if to ask you to write the oxidation half reaction this is what you would give them if they ask you to write down the reduction then this is what you give them all right so we're done with that part now we have to write down the full balance equation so what you'll do is that you would take um you would literally write these two first so you would write them as though you're adding numbers so what i mean is that this is similar to the column method of addition that is done in primary school so for instance you would have something like this and then at the bottom you would have cl2 plus 2e and then here you'll have 2cl so this is literally like the column method so you would literally have to add these two so we have to add these two stuff all right so now once we've reached this step We've got a slight problem so usually whenever you've got e on the right hand side and e on the left hand side they would cancel out but in this case they won't cancel out because this is 2e and that is e so now what do you do so in order to cancel them out you need to make this to be 2e so so that it can be the same so now how do we make it 2e it means you will have to multiply everything in this equation by a constant by 2 so that it can become 2e so now we're gonna have 2e here then we're gonna have 2 and we're gonna have 2 so now we've made it the same 2e and 2e so whenever one is on the left hand side and the other one is at the right hand side of the equation they can cancel out and then all we have to do is to add what is left so now here we're gonna have 2 so we're gonna have 2fe 2 plus and then we're gonna add it with this stuff so we're gonna add it with cl2 and then we're gonna have so now we're gonna add these two stuff so then this is gonna be 2fe so we're gonna have 2fe 
So 2Fe3 plus, and then we're going to have plus 2Cl. So we're going to have 2Cl. Yep, so notice I added what was left on the left hand side and on the right hand side. I added everything except the electrons that were cancelled. So there we have it. This is our balanced equation. Alright, here is another example. So you are told balance the following redox reaction. And now here they say it. So you are given um, Cu2 plus plus Cl minus. So this gives you Cu plus Cl2. Alright, so now if I ask to balance this following uh, redox reaction, so now we have to deal with this part first. So let's deal with this. So this is going to be, so it was C, it was Cu plus Cu2 plus then it became Cu, so meaning that the charge is zero. So let's deal with the atoms. So now the atoms, well, we've got one and one, so it's balanced. What about the charge? So here we've got two plus, and then now here we've got zero. So it means that we have to look at the one that has got the higher positive charge, which is the one on the left hand side, because there's two plus and there's zero. So now it means what we have to do to this charge in order for it to become like the zero. We have to subtract two so it means that we have to add two electrons so which is the same as subtracting so we have added two electrons which is the same as subtracting from the charge so then this is gonna be um this is gonna look like so far so we have dealt with this part so now let's also deal with this pair so now looking at that it was cl minus so it was Cl minus, then it became Cl2. So now we have Cl2. So let's balance the atoms. Are the atoms balanced? Not done balanced. This is Cl2, but this is Cl. So we have to add two so that they can be balanced. Now let's look at the charge. Well, as for the charge, now notice this is zero. So every time I'm looking at pure compounds, it's always zero. Now let's look at this stuff. Well, this is minus one, but because there are two of them, it's gonna be minus two. So we've got zero and minus two. So which one is the higher positive charge? Well, it's this one. So what do we have to do to this one to make it like this one? Well, we have to subtract two from the charge. So in other words, we have to add two electrons. So when we add two electrons, the charges are balanced because this side is uh, minus one times two, which is minus two. And then this stuff is zero. Then here we're going to have minus 2, which is just the same as minus 2. So they are balanced. All right, so now we have um, dealt with each half. So we have dealt with this part and we have dealt with this part. So now we would literally write them on top of each other. So we would literally write them as the column method that is done in primary school. So right now we... Um, we see that there's two electrons, two electrons, so they're balanced, so we don't have to balance it this time. But here is a question. What if this was three and this was two? How would you balance it? Would you balance it by maybe multiplying this by, by two? Well, if you multiply this by two, it will still not be balanced. Or what would you do? So here's a simple solution. So if you see that this is three and this is two, we cannot multiply one of them by a certain number for them to be balanced, except if you use fractions. But to avoid problems, this is what you'll do. You will just simply say, this row will be times three, and that row will be times two. So it will be balanced. So in other words, you will now have it as two, and then this side will become six, and then this is two. So because we've multiplied by two, and then this side, you will now have six, and then this will be three, and then this will be six, so now they look the same so it's just a rough example so um don't mind my handwriting just a rough example so if it was three here and two here you would just multiply this one by three and this one by two so that's what you do so you multiply this row by three and this row by two so if that if those were the numbers but in this case it's two and two so they're balanced so all we have to do is just cancel out the ones that are the same but on opposite sides of the equation. And how you know you are correct is when one is on the left and the other one is on the right. So this is the oxidation or rather this, uh, this is the reduction half reaction because it decreased from 2 plus to 0. 
and then this is the oxidation half reaction because it increased from negative 1 to 0 and then all we have to do now is to write down um, what we have so on the left hand side we've got Cu so we've got Cu 2 plus and then we're gonna, we're gonna have plus 2 Cl minus and then this gives us when we add this stuff this is just gonna be Cu plus Cl2 so that's what we have so far so there we have it this is the balanced redox reaction all right here is a new level so let's just say you are told balance the following redox reaction so you are given this stuff and let's say they told you that it's in an acidic medium so if they tell you that it's in an acidic medium so an acidic medium so this is a new level so whenever they tell you that it's in an acidic medium we balance it uh, there's an extra step that we will do so we balance it a little bit different from the previous so so for instance so this has got chromium and this also has got chrom uh, this is chromium so this two we can pair this two so let's pair it so then we're gonna have um, CR2 then we're gonna have O7 so the total charge is 2 minus so the total charge is 2 minus and then so this is what it was before then this is what it became after so as we know before we have to first balance the atoms so we've got a problem we've got cr2 and o7 so we've got oxygen on the left hand side but we do not have oxygen on the right hand side so the difference in, in this level is that this is an acidic medium so it means it takes place in water so whenever you've got oxygen on the left hand side and you don't have it on the right hand side you have to add water so that there can be oxygen on the right hand side all right so notice there are seven oxygen on the left hand side of the equation so we have to balance it so we have to make sure that also seven on the right so there's seven oxygen on the right so the oxygen part is balanced now we've got one slight problem the slight problem that we have is that we've got hydrogen on the right hand side of the equation we do not have it on the left side of the equation so notice first we added water on the right hand side of the equation in order to ensure that the equation is balanced in terms of oxygen all right so now notice we have balanced the oxygen so we've got seven oxygen on the left and we've got seven oxygen on the right but now we have 14 hydrogens on the right hand side of the equation but we do not have hydrogen on the left so what you'll do is that you'll add hydrogen so we'll add 14 hydrogen on the left hand side of the equation so now notice why did i not add water so i didn't add water because if you add water it will the number of oxygen will not be balanced again so the steps of acidic medium is uh, simple all you have to do is whenever you want to balance the oxygen you add water on the right hand side of the equation and then after adding water you will now have to add hydrogen on the left side of the equation so that it can be balanced so the number of hydrogen that you should add on the left hand side should be the same as the number of hydrogen that is present on the right hand side of the equation in an acidic medium you always add water on the right hand side of the equation in order to balance the oxygen the one that has got oxygen and then in order to balance hydrogen you will just add the number of hydrogens on the left hand side of the equation so that it can balance with the number of hydrogens that are on the at the right hand side of the equation so everything is balanced except chromium so now notice here there are two here there is only one so it means you have to add two here so this is what we have so so far we have balanced the atoms now we need to balance the charge because the first step is balance the atoms the next step is balance the charge so now we have the total charge of this compound which is negative two so negative two and then now we've got the total charge which is plus one but now we've got uh we've got a slight thing so notice there are 14 of them so we're gonna say 14 times that positive charge so it's gonna be 14 times uh, positive 1 so now this is gonna give you 12 so now we've got 12 so it means the charge is plus out of the equation so now let's figure out the total charge here so now notice here there is actually nothing here so it means that it's 0 and times 7 is still 0 so what about this side now here is 3 so then times 2 is 6 so it means on the right hand side of the equation there are six 
so we have positive 12 and positive, positive 6 so now what do we have to do in order to make them balance we have to focus on the side that has got the higher positive charge so in order to make this the same as 6 we have to subtract 6 from 12 so that we can have them being equal so in order to subtract 6 it means that we have to add 6 electrons so that is exactly what we're going to do so it therefore means that we will write this equation as cr2 then we have o7 2 minus then plus 14 h plus and then we'll add six electrons in order to balance the charges so we'll add six electrons in order to balance the charges and then this is gonna be so then this is gonna be uh, the same stuff so this is what we're gonna have so we have dealt with one pair so now we have to deal with the other pair so we have dealt with this one so now let's deal with this one so now we're gonna have so before it was h2s and then finally it's gonna become s so now let's check sulfur is indeed balanced sulfur is balanced but hydrogen is not balanced we've got two hydrogen on the left hand side of the equation so notice i'm not gonna add water because we do not have oxygen if we had oxygen yes i would add water and then and then add hydrogen but now we only have hydrogen so whenever you have hydrogen you just have to add hydrogen on the side that does not have hydrogen so it means that this is gonna be you're just gonna add hydrogen so now there are two of them so it means here you add you will say 2h plus whenever you add hydrogen whenever it is an a uh, redox reaction it's always gonna be h plus so that's how it is so now h is balanced s is also balanced so now let's check um and the charge is balanced we've balanced the atoms now let's balance the charges so now here the total charge is zero and then this side we've got zero and here we've got one but notice it's not really one it is actually okay notice it's not one we have to multiply by two so then it's going to become two times one which is two so now we're comparing zero and two which one has a higher positive charge well it is two that has the higher positive charge so what do we have to do Two to two to make it like zero we have to subtract two from the charge meaning that we have to add two electrons so it means that we're gonna add two electrons at the right hand side of the equation so finally we can now write this two equation in the column method so you will just put it in the column method now notice this is two um, we've got two electrons and here we've got six electrons so they won't cancel out and how do we know we're correct we're correct because this on the left hand side of the equation this one is on the at the right hand side of the equation so this one at the left is on the right so what you have to do is that we have to multiply all this by three so that this can become six and this can become six so if you multiply by three we're gonna have three and we're gonna have three and then this two it's gonna become uh, uh, 6 because 3 times 2 is 6 and then also this 2 is gonna become a 6 so then that's what we have so now they're the same so they can cancel so now I'm gonna write down whatever I have now I'm gonna show you something so I'm just gonna show you something so we've got CR2 then we've got O72 minus then we're gonna have plus 14 h plus and then we're gonna have plus 3 h 2 s and then this up we're gonna have so now when we add this stuff this is what we have so now we're gonna have 2 cr 3 plus and then we're gonna have i'm gonna write h 2 o last so it means that this is gonna be 3 s so we're gonna have 3 s let me instead write it like this so we're gonna have 3s plus 6h plus and then finally we're gonna have plus h2o so the space okay plus 7h2o right there so plus 7h2o so the space wasn't enough all right so now you have to notice something so this is like the final answer but it's not yet really the final answer we have got 14 h plus and we've got 6 h plus 
Whenever you have this situation, you have to take one of them to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to take this to the other side of the equation so that I can subtract them. So you have to make sure you take the smaller one to the other side of the equation because we don't end up having a negative. If I took this to the other side of the equation, I would have had 6 minus 14. And uh, whenever we're doing chemistry, we don't have minus. So we usually have plus. So we're going to have uh, this stuff. And then this is going to be so 14 minus 6 when you take that 6 to the other side. So it's going to be 14 minus 6, which is going to be 8. So we're going to have H, uh, 8H plus. Then this is going to be H2S. And then from here, we're going to have 2CR3 plus. And then this is going to be plus 3S. And then this is going to be plus 7H2O. Yep. And there we have it. So this is our final, final answer. So this brings us to the end of this video. So if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Any questions you've got or any video you want me to make, please comment below. See you in the next video.